how is it different? I would say that sports is a lot more of a way of life in mm. in the in the UK. You know, there's mm. a, there's much greater participation. I think the weather helps. You know, like it's a lot more fun to do sports when you're not sweating buckets within the first five <laughs> yeah. or ten minutes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, it's just more of a social culture. Like here, if I go for training, it's like very, like very business or like very business minded. Very like, oh, we're here to focus on training, and then like mm. go home. I also think that work life balance is a bit better in the UK. So, mm. Mm. like when I train with my club in the UK called Clapham Chasers, um, I'm training with working adults. Like one of the best guy on my team is actually a partner at Deloitte. So he, oh, really? yeah, he swings by after training. He trains hard. He goes home to his wife and kids. Uh, his but name he is Nick. to compete like or just recreationally he started recreationally so his name is Nick Bowker. Um, he was a football player for for like not professional but he played in university uh. and then a bit of a party animal and then like never picked up running until he met his wife and then his wife was part of Clapham Chasers and in, like kind of, kind of like encouraged him to come down and do running then he found like he found that you know he was quite good at it and he's just been on the upward um, swing ever since. And last year in London Marathon, he set the club record, two hours, 17 minutes. Oh, wow. shit. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, so that's five minutes faster than I've ever run. And he only started running in his 30s and now he's 36. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Wow. Yeah. So that's just like natural, natural talent. He obviously has good, like, sporting natural talent because, and I think that he wasn't sedentary or so, like, he did play football, uh, I think it was centre back or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. so, taller, muscular guy, but he's lost a lot of the upper body mass through long distance running. But like you know, he has to got the competitive mindset. Um, and then so and then just and he he he's got a career as an accountant. He swings by after training and like basically like he has fun doing it. And, then, and he runs a two seventeen marathon. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then there's Matt Dickinson who works works at a hedge fund and has run two nineteen. Wow. Yeah, yeah super. Um, bit of a, bit of a, he got the 80s rocker look, like, you know, like long hair, mm. moustache and everything. And, and like, you know, he comes for training, um, ties his hair in a bun and then goes out and like smashes all of us. And then mm. he runs like 219 for the marathon. So oh yeah, my it's God. Cool. And these people, so basically they are not even competing professionally. They uh, have no sponsorships, no nothing. La. They might get free gear, but like then, okay. but certainly you're right. They're, they're more amateurs than definitely. Mm the definition would be like they're amateur runners. Like they, they work a job, they swing by after swing their job, by. they train and they train really hard. Yeah. And, but they're also, there's, a lot of it is down to natural talent also. Like yeah. you, you can't do what, not, not everyone can do what they do. Yeah. Uh, even if you have like the best support in the world. So like, some of it is genetics, but also it's a way of life. Like, you know, they come, they, they do sports because, and because it's a supportive community. We mm. all go for races together. Uh, you know, and one of my, Good friends on the club is Richard and Stuart. So like Richard and Stuart and I are the the three. We're known as the the three party guys, lah. So like mm. we finish running mm. at at the track, train until like eight thirty, and then we we'll jog to the train station. But sometimes we we'll stop at the pub and have a drink <laughs> for <laughs> hour and a half. Take it on the UK life, huh? <laughs> Go to the pub, yeah. <laughs> and then and then we we'll hop on the train and go home. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, I I enjoy it. I definitely find that uh, because no, I, 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 none of my training partners here in Singapore are my drinking buddies. Like, um, yeah, it's quite separate. separate. Yeah. So, like, my drinking buddies would be those that don't really do sports and would not be sharing the track with me. And those yeah. who, do, who do my track work with me would not be the same people I go party with. Uh, so, or, like, so, or, like, socialize with very much. So, there's just that. I find that there are more people who are like me in terms of, like, mindset or, or like, you know, lifestyle in the mm. UK like compared to here. where running and your life is a lot more intertwined huh? is it? yeah yeah so like r running is running like running is part of your social life it's a social activity mm. yeah yeah, yeah exactly choose. exactly and you think that helps with performance as well it it uh i mean if you're drinking every day then that's okay maybe not the party <laughs> maybe not the drinking but, but, but yeah. i would say that um enjoy uh, having it as part of your social life is beneficial to performance in the sense that the the more you enjoy it the more likely you are to keep doing it mm -hmm. and, and the more you're having fun doing it the less stressed you are about the performance aspect of it mm. which sometimes like psychology is a very complex um, uh, field but when the pressure is off a lot of people tend to perform better mm -hmm. and you know a lot of them we show a lot of us we show up not because we are we are stressed about our performance and we want to train to get better but because we enjoy the company mm -hmm. and then the good performance is a byproduct of everything 
So if I would yeah. ask you, like, if just from your experience, why does that not happen in Singapore? Uh, it's hard to tell. I think the fundamental answer is that we don't quite have a sports culture. It's not quite a way of life. You know, mm. we do it in school, but a lot of our kids and parents, you know, they do sport because it's a way to DSA into a good school. Mm. It's not for the sake of doing it. It's always You're a means to an end. Direct school admission. Uh, yes. DSA. Oh, okay. I was going to DSA. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Direct school admission. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, why did you start playing hockey when you were in... Because uh, I took a test that told me that, okay, I have more inclination for hockey than other sports, which I initially was like, what the fuck? I don't want to play hockey. But then I started to enjoy it. Like. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So but I will say also that you always have at the back of your mind, like, you know, you do well in CCA, mm. will have you get to a better JC, mm. have you get to a better uni. But then I was thankful that I grew to love it. Mm. Uh, and some of my hockey friends still do play up till this year. Uh, but because of some injuries and all, I stopped. But yeah, it, it started off almost like, okay, this is what I do. But then I grew to love it, which I know doesn't happen mm. for a lot of people. Yeah. 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 Um, so in, in my mom, I think when she encouraged me to do sports, it was more like, hey, don't just have your studies alone. You must have something else mm. for your portfolio kind of thing. So mm. even though she enjoyed running, it was still initially a means to an end. But then I enjoyed running. It came to the point where I, I wanted to take running to the next level. I wanted to, you know, I'm good at this. I want to keep, I want to like throw everything I have into this. I want to like, you know, make, make it as a runner. And then that's when they're like, hey, hey actually like, no need, no need, no need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Typical Asian parents, like, you know, yeah. like, no need, no need, just focus on career, you know, they kind, they kind of, um... so, I mean, again, I do believe that the sports culture is a lot stronger in the UK. That's why, I mean, look at UK sports is, is thriving, like foot, yeah, football. Yeah. Foot, oh, sorry, it went off for like one second. But like, you look at football, it's, a, it's like a way of life. Mm. Whereas here, sports is seen by many parents as a distraction from your studies. studies yeah. And if that attitude is inculcated in a kid from a young age, yeah. there's no chance he's going to like pick up the, like sports later in life, like 25, 30 years old. Mm. It's not mm. something like, oh, finish work already, okay, let's go and play sports. You know, mm. We don't quite see that. Now, Singapore is like, go for brunch. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Ruin, I want to go for brunch. Yeah. Uh-huh. Brunch. Yeah. Wait, you mean <laughs> or what? go for drinks? The social, the social, or like <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 drinks yeah, yeah. or supper or something. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very hard to chew adults to go mm. and like play, even yeah. if it's a pickup game or basketball or something. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. But it's quite different, I, I noticed over there. Yeah. 